I got the little hat potty, the pants squatty potty, trainers. I got the little cozy for around the potty, the underwear. I got all the things because that is what we were going to do at four months old. Here's the thing though. Once she started crawling, all bets were off. Hi everyone, welcome back to today's episode of the Heil Home. Here we talk about motherhood, natural living and homemaking, which includes renovating our 1940s home. Today I am sharing with you our potty training journey from elimination communication to sort of potty independence, still working on that part. So I felt like I should top on and share this because one, we're in the crux of it and in the middle of all the things. And then two, because as a new parent kind of had a lot of guilt slash expectations around elimination communication. And I just wanted to share my perspective, whether or not I even think it's worth it and how that has resulted in potty training. So with all that aside, let's get into it. So when my daughter was between three and four months old, she had a horrible diaper rash. She actually ended up having a yeast infection diaper rash. And while we were treating it, I ended up having her sitting out air drying pretty much all the time. Now, before that, I had heard about elimination communication, which is essentially potty training your baby. If it's not potty training. They make a huge deal about the fact that this is not potty training. It's potty training. Let's simplify it. And I thought that sounds great when she can sit up, I will start doing that. Well, I had been listening to Go Diaper Free's podcast at the time about potty training and all of the stuff. And she was sharing about the different signs that your baby gives right before they go to the bathroom. Well, lo and behold, I'm staring at my baby, letting her bum air dry for hours at a time. And I realized she actually had some indications of when she was gonna use the restroom. And that started me on the whole e journey of potty training. So I got all the stuff. I got the little hat potty. I got the little squatty potty. I got the little cozy for around the potty, the pants, trainers, the underwear. I got all the things because that is what we were going to do at four months old. And I started doing elimination communication with my little one. I will say this, however, you do actually need that little hat potty. Everyone was kind of like, you don't need it. You don't need it. If you're going to do EC, you do, because my daughter was not going to go over the sink. That was just too scary for her. So if you do want to go this route, I do recommend the potty. At the time, I was still working from home and I don't really know what possessed me to do all that, but I was pretty good at it. I remember I felt so proud of myself because she would be playing and I would be talking and I'd be like, she has to go to the bathroom and I would take her, pick her up, take her diaper off, place her over the little hat potty and she would go. And I felt like the best parent in the world. Now, all of that is great. And I'm not saying anything bad about that. Here's the thing though. The host of Go Diaper Free can be a little bit brutal. In my opinion, she takes it a tiny bit too serious. I felt like if I didn't do it, I wasn't giving my daughter the autonomy that she deserved. Do I think it's great to potty train early? Sure. Do I think it's beneficial psychologically? Maybe. Do I think that you're being a bad parent if you don't do EC? No, I don't, but I did feel that way. And so I was kind of roped into it under the assumption that this was the right thing to do psychologically and developmentally. I do understand that years ago, before we had disposable diapers and before even cloth diapering was really super prominent, that you have to just kind of make it happen because what else are you gonna do? You can't get poop everywhere. But I don't think it's as foundational as she talked about. In the Go Diaper Free podcast, she was very much a proponent of your child knows how to do this from birth. And I will say after having two children and after experimenting with this, that is not 100% true. Now with my daughter, it was closer to true because anytime I took her diaper off, she decided to try and let it all out. And for her, elimination communication was great. For my son, I could leave him naked for a long time and he wouldn't go because he just doesn't have it naturally. And I know in theory on the podcast, what she would say is, well, he's already learned to go in his diaper and he already learned that his that's his toilet, so he's not gonna go outside. And no, that's not true. I know my son. And I know that that's not the case. He was never like that. We did a lot of diaper free time. So if you decide to go the EC route, just know that the podcast is a little bit intense. So on my journey, we 
were doing elimination communication. We were going really strong. I was getting almost every single poo in a lot of the pees and she was doing great. And if you're cloth diapering, it's really great because you're having to clean up all the poo. And so it was really saving me on time actually in the long run. Here's the thing though. Once she started crawling, all bets were off. She did not want to sit on that potty. It was a game of tug of war. I was very pregnant and there was no signs anymore. Even when I would let her go diaper free and try to re-find out what my signs were, there wasn't any indications. And she was getting frustrated with it. I was getting frustrated with it. I was getting exhausted by it. Becoming more work because at some point your children kind of shift. So when they're newborns, they're like pooping at every interval of the day where when they get a little bit older, maybe they're going to the bathroom once or twice a day on a regular schedule. And you think in theory that that would make it easier, but when your child just wants to go in private when they're alone, when you're not harassing them and holding them over a little pot, it gets hard. So for me, we stopped doing elimination communication, pretty much cold turkey at that point. And I felt a little bit guilty about it. I'm not gonna lie because her podcast is pretty intense. It's like, you need to be able to at least do this once a day, but she wouldn't even go for the so-called easy catches, which is the morning diaper changes and the poops. She wouldn't go during that point because she didn't like being held over that potty. It wasn't a matter of me over offering her. It wasn't a matter of anything except she just didn't want to do it. So we stopped and I'm kind of glad we did because I feel like the more I would have fought her on it, the harder it would have made potty training later because she still doesn't want to use the little potties. And I just told myself, well, this isn't gonna work. I'll at least do early potty training. Now, I know there's a debate on that because a lot of people wait. A lot of people wait for signs of readiness. And one thing I will agree with Andrea Olson on in her podcast is I don't believe children show quote unquote signs of readiness. And if they do, I do think that they show them very young because children are very capable. So. I'm not a proponent of waiting a long time or waiting until your children is ready for potty training. I think you just need to do a gentle method like I'm going to explain in this video and it can kind of happen naturally, but it needs to be parent led. So I had decided that we were gonna do potty training at an early age. I actually put it on the calendar to dedicate a whole week, week she turned one right then and there to do potty training. Now my daughter was kind of a late walker, so she wasn't even walking when she turned one. So that was out of the question because your child pretty much needs to be walking before they can officially do potty training. So my daughter started walking around 14 months and then around 17 months we decided to do potty training and it was right after I graduated I decided to take the week and just do potty training. So leading up to that because I knew that that was what I wanted to do is when she started walking I wanted to do the potty training thing, I wanted to spend a week, I wanted to really make it work for her, help her learn, is I decided then that I would start putting her back on the potty for the morning piece and that I would not worry about any of the other elimination communication things just for morning piece. Now I'm going to tell you that I didn't catch a single pee during this whole time. However, it did really help her get used to the toilet. So then when it came time to do the potty training and it really came down to it, she wasn't afraid. Because I do know that that can be a really real thing is your children can be terrified of sitting on the potty. Now my daughter is a little bit different. She loves doing things that she sees me and my husband do. So obviously like any other mom out there, my child has been in the bathroom with me while I've used the toilet. So she sees me on the toilet and thinks, yay, that's something I wanna do. Also, and this might sound a little ridiculous, but the bathroom is a place we all kind of hang out. If my husband's there taking a shower, I'll sit on the toilet with the doll closed up, just having a conversation. And so she'll sit there too if I'm brushing my teeth or taking a shower. She's been used to being in the bathroom and sitting on the toilet. Whether or not it was closed or not, she just was used to that. So I do think that something that elimination communication does that I really like is get your child familiar with the bathroom and the toilet because some children, especially if you wait too long, are terrified of the toilet. So didn't have to deal with that. So when we started potty training, what I did was I kind of slowly weaned her into it. So we started, like I said, with just every morning sitting on the potty for several weeks leading up to it. And she would just sit there and then she'd just 
do 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 and try to stand up and you know just the normal kid things and then she would say all done because she does the baby sign language even though she wasn't all done and I would say okay and I would say you're going on the potty and just familiarize her with the language of the potty slash getting her used to sitting on it every morning. When it came down to potty training when I first started the week I just sectioned out the first half of the day from wake up time till nap time and we did training pants and every time I could tell that she peed I said oh you've gone potty and I took her upstairs or set her on the little squatty potty took off her training pants and said you need to go potty on the toilet like we go potty on the toilet and very casual no correction no belittling or demeaning or anything like that just conversation like oh you went potty in your your underwear, we go potty on the toilet and this is what that looks like. And obviously she had already gone so she didn't go on the toilet, but she got familiar with IP and now I'm sitting on the toilet. And we did that from wake up time till nap time. And then the rest of the day, she'd just be in a diaper. We did that starting Monday. Then Tuesday, we did that. Wednesday, we started Thursday. I put everything else away and said, okay, now we are going to focus specifically on potty training. And I recommend that if you're getting serious about potty training, that you dedicate at least three days, maybe more to, okay, this is all we're doing. The house is gonna be a mess. I'm not gonna get school or work or anything else done. So if you're a work at home mom, maybe take the days off or do it on a weekend. If you do video editing, video blogging, anything like that, just put that away and focus those three days at least on just potty training. So that's what we did starting Thursday. Thursday morning, I didn't put her in her trainers. I put her in just underwear or if it wasn't underwear, it was just pants. So she went commando and we went from there. So we have a lot of rugs. So I had to be really particular. And what I ended up doing is just setting her on the potty every 15 minutes. Now, what we did was chocolate for going potty. Initially, I started off giving her chocolate for trying on the potty. I don't at all recommend that because what ended up happening was I'd set her on the potty and then she would cry immediately because she wanted chocolate because she just associated sitting on the potty with chocolate. So we switched that up pretty quickly and I started only giving her chocolate for when she used the potty. So that morning I put her on the potty. She didn't go. I waited 15 minutes. I put her back on. She ended up going pee on the potty and she got a piece of chocolate. And then I just continuously put her on the potty every 15 to 30 minutes. It really depended on like whether or not she actually went, how much water she was drinking, and also if she had just eaten. And we did that for Thursday, Friday, and by Saturday, she had mostly got it besides the poo. So Thursday, obviously we had tons of accidents. I had to be very on top of her because as soon as she peed, I said, uh-oh, you peed, let's go sit on the potty. I picked her up, I took off her pants, I set her on the potty. Plus I was offering her the potty enough times that eventually just when I set her on the potty, she went and then we had less and less accidents. So I think Thursday we had two accidents, Friday we had one, and then Saturday we had one. And then from there, we have had relatively few. There's been one or two since then that were my fault. I'll explain that in a minute. But just did the whole, she went potty, set her on the potty, but then offering every 15 to 30 minutes. We haven't done nighttime or nap time. I just told myself like, we're not gonna worry about that. Just put her in a diaper for those two times because I am prioritizing sleep over the bathroom when it comes to that. So I don't want to mess her sleep up since she's been sleeping really good and I'll just wait till she's a little bit older and her bladder can hold for longer periods of time anyway. But that's essentially all we did is just put her in cotton pants and when she peed, we put her on the potty. So she was able to get it pretty quickly. There wasn't any crying. I don't recommend any belittling or anything like that. It was just very casual because I know potty training can be traumatizing and that's one of the reasons that we don't want to do it too young but if we can do it in a really casual just like oh hey maybe we'll do it this way type way then it could be really great now here's the mistakes i've made that have caused accidents she is really good at telling me when she's done we taught her from a very young age that this is all done and so i will set her on the potty and after a couple minutes i'll ask her well are you all done because there's times when i put her on the potty and she doesn't have to go now if i 
don't wait till then and I take her off the potty before she says all done, typically she still has some and those have been where the accidents have come from. So like today I put her on the potty. I felt like she was there for a long time and I, she was playing with like a toy. So I thought she was just distracted. So I took her off the potty. Lo and behold, she had to poop. So then she like immediately poops on the floor and she like looks at it and she's like this, like get rid of it. So she understood and she was communicating that, hey, I'm not done, but I misunderstood and took her off the potty before she was done. So that was my fault. And then the other time was my husband took her over to our church and I hadn't had her sit on the potty. So then she started being like really fussy and he was like, what's going on? And she peed, she just peed because she was trying to tell him like, hey, take me to the bathroom. So that was also my fault, but she's been really good and a rock star for how young she is. And it's really mostly at this stage on me. Like I need to offer the potty. I need to make sure she's done when she goes. And I still am giving the chocolate every time she goes. So that's where we are potty wise. I guess that's still technically elimination communication, but it's been pretty good. I don't stress over misses. I don't stress over accidents or obviously I'm not stressing over bedtime or nap time. Time. A couple of tips that I have with all of this, obviously besides the just having a positive attitude and not making it a huge deal, is don't give chocolate for just sitting on the potty. Only reserve that for when they've gone. And then two, let them have a toy while they're on the potty. We brush our teeth at on the potty. I put her on the toilet and then she like takes a toothbrush and she brushes her teeth because she also finds that really enjoyable. I think it's fine for her to have a little toy because it kind of helps her relax. It makes her distracted and she typically goes. So that's something else. I know there's a lot of debate on that. Like, no, we need to just focus on the potty. But if you think about it, if you go to the bathroom and, and you're there for a prolonged period of time, what are you doing? You're typically scrolling because you're trying to relax and you're trying to kind of make it a casual situation. So why wouldn't it make sense for them to have a toy? So those are my three tips is don't stress about it. Like, don't make it a big deal. Don't offer chocolate unless they've actually gone and it's okay to give them a little toy or something to distract them and keep them on the potty. So I think that's it. That's our potty training journey. And obviously we're still working on it, but it's been pretty good for a while. So that's great. I hope that was helpful to you to kind of give a perspective of what we're doing and maybe it's something you want to try. And I also hope that kind of eases up the whole like whether or not you should do elimination communication or not. Do you think it helps in familiarizing her with going potty? Don't think it was necessary though. If you enjoy my content like this, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you all in future videos. Thanks. Bye.